Now, to discuss on more on this, we let's bring Professor Liu Chi, the Vice Dean of the School of uh, Computer Science and Technology at the Beijing Institute of Technology. Professor Liu, welcome to Global Watch. Well, first of all, how would you assess the domestic environment for China's uh, sci-tech innovation? What are the opportunities and also challenges? Uh, I think Chinese government is always emphasizing the importance of uh, science and technology innovation, especially uh, fundamental uh, research. For example, uh, according to the uh, the Prime Minister, uh, we increased the expenditure of the science tech funding by 2% this year. And in terms of our opportunities and, and challenges, I think university uh, professors and researchers are now looking at uh, the cutting edge inter interdisciplinary research areas. I would like to take an example of AI for science. For example, uh, the, along this direction, uh, China's uh, Ministry of Science and Technology has launched a special deployment of the AI for science that closely integrate uh, the key issues of basic disciplines, including the mathematics, the physics, chemistry, and the astronomy, but not uh, undergoing the a traditional way of doing that, uh, but uh, integrating the new technologies uh, from the AI to do the drug research gene research, biological uh, breeding, new materials research, etc. And a product of, a, uh, you know, as a deep integration of AI uh, represented by machine learning together. I think those are opportunities as well as challenges. Yeah. Right. And uh, actually, President Xi stresses the innovation of cutting edge technologies and the development of uh, advanced industries. The goals are kind of specific here. Uh, would you please give us a sense of China's performance on this? What are some, some of the fields that China specializes in and what are the gaps from the developed countries? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can give a few of uh, my justifications uh, according to my work field in terms of communication technologies and computer science, where I believe that many cutting edge technologies lie today. For example, that we talk about big data, we talk about AI, 5G, blockchain, etc. Uh, let me explain. For, for AI, our researchers have made significant contribution to different AI applications, which help to boost our economy and the people employment, uh, which is no doubt we have made good, very good contributions. However, we'll have to admit that we are lacking behind in terms of uh, proposing uh, the uh, fundamental AI algorithms, theories, and chips. Uh, ChatGPT is an example of that whose technology is a human feedback, what we call human feedback reinforcement learning. Another example relates to GPU, as I said, the AI chips, uh, you know, everybody knows the US regulators last year has put in uh, place the rule to stop uh, NVIDIA <coughs> from selling its most uh, advanced uh, GPU, which is A100 and H100 uh, to Chinese customers. Um, so these issues, we are, we are, we are not, we, we are not really advancing in the, in the world. Um, on the other hand, we talk about 5G and even 6G planning ahead, we're definitely leading in the world. According to the uh, Ministry of uh, Industrial and Information Technology, uh, um, that uh, we have uh, uh, we plan to increase resources to accelerate the 5G deployment across the nation, when number 5G base station has exceeded 2.64 million by the end of March this year, and predicted to hit the 2.9 million at the end of 2023. Uh, meanwhile, we are planning, well planning ahead in terms of 6G, what we call IMT 2030 promotion group, and send an MOU uh, on, on 6G and 6G smart networks with uh, European uh, Industrial Research Association, which means that we are not only in China, we're working on this, but also we are leading some, somehow in the world in terms of 6G. Right, you mentioned uh, some uh fields that China specializes in, there's some fields that China still has gaps from other countries. Um, President Xi calls for more international cooperation and openness on sci-tech innovation. Then what exactly do you think China can, or China's innovation can bring to the world? I, I do believe that science and technology has no boundaries. It doesn't, it, 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 it does have the ownership, but it does not have restricted the boundary to one country. I would like to take an example of China's high-speed rail as an example. They undergo the process from, everybody knows about this acquisition, adoption, re-innovation to independent innovation. These days, now China has risen to be the world leader in uh, high-speed rail technology. And this impact has uh, bring benefit uh, to other countries. 
for example, last year November, the high speed uh, line in Indonesia uh, connecting Jakarta and the fourth largest city, uh, Bandung, uh, cut the journey between these two cities from over three hours to uh, 40 minutes. Uh, with a design speed of 350 kilometers per hour, thanks to our railway electricity system, uh, which is from the, which is designed and implemented, constructed by China's, uh, according to China's technology standard and China's companies, uh, to inter enterprises uh, from the train to the electricity si system, which are also under the, the Bell and Road Initiative, which shows that our technology really brings benefit to the world. Mm. All right, thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor Liu Chi from uh, Beijing Institute of Technology. Thank you very much.